Oi, oi. You are listening to episode 30 of an AFL podcast with me, Matt Lunt, Matt Pearson, and Matty Ashton. So, this marks our one year anniversary as a podcast. Oi. And for it, we needed a very special guest. So, in this episode, we speak to the lovely fella that is James Vett Galotti, who is the frontman and songwriter from Death of Vanna and now a producer. We caught him at Steel City Studios in Sheffield whilst he was working with a certain band, but you'll find all of that out in a tiny bit. So in this episode, we talk about Depavanna, obviously, producing music, ghosts, aliens, drugs, uh, and anything else you could possibly think about, and it got deep and it got weird really quick. But before you listen to that very fun, strange episode... If you want to stay up to date with us on this strange time, we'll be dropping some more bonus episodes, some extra stuff. So it's at an earful podcast everywhere. If you like it, great. If you don't, I don't want to hear about it. Enjoy the episode. Hello, James. Welcome. Hello, Hello guys. Thanks How for you? doing this, mate. Thank you very much for having me. Matt Cubed. Hey. Yeah. I like it. There's too many, so hey. many Matts. Can you just make it as easy as possible? My name's actually Steve, but I changed it for the <laughs> podcast. No, it's Bobby. What are you doing? <laughs> you bastard. We, cha- we changed his name to Bobby one time when we played a gig in London and like uh, we stole his phone. It's just stuck ever since. Got on it and we got on Facebook and you can't change your name for like 40 days or something. So his name was <laughs> no, 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 no. Bobby Pearson after that for I like, like 40 it. days. 90 like it. days. Uh, no, was it 90, 90 days? Three months. 90 days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably got used to it, didn't you? Mate, I was counting it down. <laughs> <laughs> It's like being in prison. <laughs> <laughs> not that I would know. I wouldn't know either. Surprisingly. No. Not that I don't know how I've avoided that. <laughs> right, so we're we're in Steel City Studio. Yeah, we're in the, the wonderful South Yorkshire city of Sheffield. My favourite brothel on earth. City, city sauna. You ever been there? In Sheffield? Yeah. No, but I found out oh, what we're shit. doing when we come back. Documentary about it, mate. Oh, yeah, fuck, a very British it. brothel. Right. I was pissed up one night when we were recording our record. I can, can I curse on it? I, can swear Gosh, I, can. I was pissed up one night when we were recording our record and I was like, fuck it. I fancy a bit of the old, you know. And um, I went down there. Nothing happened. I ended up working on reception for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, walked in and I recognised one of the girls from the bloody documentary because I, yeah. I was big into that documentary. It's hilarious. They're lovely. They're like motherly figures, you know. Yeah. So not what you really want at a brothel. It kind of turns you off. You go there, you're like, mm, see you later. Um, <laughs> Don't want to be greeted by your mum. Yeah, it was, but it was, it was lovely. <laughs> Basically, what happened was I just I was serving people tea and coffees. Um, Did you owe them money or something? I didn't owe them money at all. I just was, I'm just a nice. I just liked it. <laughs> they were just really nice. They gave me a pink dressing gown, a pair of slippers to wear. Um, we played cards against humanity. What? I saw a bloke. I saw a bloke wanking in the <laughs> in the front room. It was wicked. It was, it was one of the best nights of my life, actually. Yeah, because I saw the documentary and they all look like, they're all pretty old, aren't they? Like, they were there. Yeah, they are. They're, they're yeah. very, like, motherly. Yeah. It's like it's and you get, you get your regulars that come in as well, don't you? Oh, and they know time. exactly what they want. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. It, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was unbelievable. I, I, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Really 10 enjoyed out of 10 it. would recommend. Yeah, go but again. Not, I, I can't comment on <laughs> the, the thing that most people go there for. I can comment on... Working. Customer service, yeah, Working customer service, great. Yeah. <laughs> I might, I'll nip down there. The more time I spend up here, the more time I'll, just, I'll nip down there again, and we'll, I'll introduce you to the girl. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll, ne- I don't know. Next I time we're here, that's what we're doing on the first night. It's <laughs> literally, it's literally. Reception. You know where Tesco's is? We're on early. You, it's yeah. like right next to that. Yeah, it's quality. It's lovely. Are you trips in one? Shopping. <laughs> 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 we'll get some work in. They didn't pay me. They should have done. Bastards. I don't know. No, You've done yeah. enough working for free, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Big time. That was good. But yeah, I don't know why I mentioned that. Sheffield. What a start. The Sheffield. one thing I didn't think we'd talk about. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely have. Ridiculous. Um, so you're here with, can I say the band? Yeah, just Fox Bloods. Socks Absolutely. Bloods. Uh, Socks Bloods? Yeah, we always take the piss that you should cool. do um, socks as merch. You definitely. Yeah. Socks Bloods. Yeah. Socks Bloods. We, you should, actually. Yeah, we did socks ones. No one bought them. <laughs> no one buy them. But I've got about 20 pairs of my own bound socks in my... <laughs> <laughs> no. Actually. Turns out that's not a very lucrative merch move. Found our new promo code, though. <laughs> Get some Defavana <laughs> socks. Can do. <laughs> 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 
Get ten percent off with an airfall. <laughs> City sauna. <laughs> <laughs> With my code, all capitals. <laughs> You've just got to do one shift to earn it. <laughs> <laughs> Take them off Keith's feet in <laughs> oh <God>. number three. <laughs> Keith. It's the most disgusting name ever, though, isn't it, Keith? <laughs> Sorry if anyone's got any relation to Keith. I wouldn't say it's disgusting. I think it's just a... I heard... It's a couple of years ago now. Let Bear in mind, the name Keith's been out of fashion for a long time, I think. Yeah. You know, about two years ago, I was walking through London, and I there was a woman pushing a pram with a baby in it. And she said to her husband, oh, Keith's getting tired. So it must be the baby. That's a, ba- a baby called Keith. <laughs> a baby Keith. <laughs> in like 2018. Can you believe that? Anyway, irrelevant again, sorry. Yeah, no, that's, I'm rambling. That's, that's, that's the fun of podcasts. podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know anything about music, so I just pretend. I don't really. <laughs> no, I got off on tangents. I've been faking it for years. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're producing Sucks Bloods? Absolutely. How's that going? Very well. I, How did this decision it. come about that you want to... Um, because we're kind of like on a bit of a down period right now. We're not really doing anything. And that's not, that's not why I d- I've always wanted to, basically I, I love, I've always favored the studio over live because there's less things that can go wrong. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's, I can vouch for that. Yeah. There's more, um, chances that, well, basically if you do it wrong, do it again, can't you? Yeah, exactly. So live doesn't have that. So I, and like, I don't know. I don't get the buzz that everyone else, I, everyone I speak to in a band is like, oh, I love playing live. I fucking love it. That's what I live for. It. I'm like, I've never, I've never felt that. Maybe like three shows in the ten years I've been a band that I've really, truly enjoyed every second of. But I get a buzz from like writing a cool melody and like, and especially recently, like I've really got into like shaping songs and and uh, coming up with like, I like I like putting influences into to genres which wouldn't necessarily be there. So I listen to a lot of like R and B and a lot of like hip hop and stuff like that. So. A lot of the vocal lines I suggest to people wouldn't they wouldn't necessarily come up with because it's just alien, but it sounds cool. It's like a fusion, I guess. But yeah, I don't know that I've just I've wanted to do it for ages, and then obviously my friend Phil owns and runs this studio. He recorded our record. We recorded Rituals here, and he and he he like a couple of months ago was like, dude, if you ever want to do any production work, like please please come and help. And I was like, hey, yeah, that's literally Say no my more. dream job. Yeah, yeah. It's great. So yeah, that's that's kind of. I think that's what I want to get into. I want to make it a permanent thing. I'm thinking about moving up here. I like it. Sheffield's like took me by surprise. It's such a nice place. And then yeah, it's sick. I like, like I really like it. Being in that studio because I'm an outsider. I get to just sit, watch Oxbloods, you Observe. and Callum work it. Yeah, and I'll just twiddle around on my synths every now and then. <laughs> but like, it's I such a nice environment seeing you just listen to some music, bounce off of it. And then here's the melody you've got, and then you're bouncing with members of the band yeah, and yeah, back and forth. It was so cool to see. Yeah, I think I enjoy it. I think the whole process has kind of just been like re-energizing in terms of that sense, just to see someone actually That's enjoying good. what we were doing, what yeah, we're currently man. doing. It's, it's like, yeah, this kind of revitalizes me a bit. This is. This is enjoyable. It's easy to get bogged down in a band, <coughs> and I think that's why it's nice it's, to come to I different think, environments. I think it happens. To everyone, it's normal, isn't Unless it? Unless you're an incredibly positive person, which is few and far between. Yeah, you're gonna get you. Get, it's gonna become too much. Like you're doing the same thing every single day, and like, if you're this is what I was saying earlier. Like, if you're the only if you're the only person. So from f- in my band, I'm the principal songwriter. If I'm the only person throwing these ideas around in my head and not bouncing it off anyone else, I don't even know what's good anymore. I don't. I, I don't have a gauge of like yeah. what is good anymore because you just get lost in it. So you've been listening to it or thinking about that idea for so long that it, beco- it becomes it like different in your it's head. like when you say a word over and over and over again, it, lo- it just loses it meaning. Yeah. yeah, it sounds weird, doesn't it? So like it's the same with a song. Like you get so fucking lost in it, you need to take a step back or have someone to bounce ideas off. So for instance, when we did rituals, Phil was that guy mm. who owns the studio. Like him and Callum, it was most of the sessions was us three just like. I'd come up with something and they'd be like, yeah, it's sick, but blah, blah, blah. And then I'd be like, oh, okay, cool. And that kind of like, that really opened my eyes a lot. And like, I don't know, like I, if I can help other, if I can help yeah. people such as yourselves, like achieve what you want to achieve just just by offering an outside opinion that you yeah. may not necessarily normally have, then that is like, that makes me so happy. I think I find it hilarious how this all came around. Eventually. Like it originally was like, Phil went, I've got a proposal for you. Text me. I was like, Right, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "What the fuck's he on about?" So, <laughs> so he um, he like sent me something. Right, here's my pitch. I was like, "Here we go." 
Because we've been on about coming to Steel City for ages. But I think after that, that's, we've had such a turbulent year yeah. in terms of what's been going on with us that we, it's just never happened. Yeah. So it was just like, so James from Death of Vanna is producing and I'm going to mix it and Calm's going to be a mix engineer and it'll be X amount. What do you say? And I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> just like, yeah. That's great. That's great. That's awesome. Like, that's what, that, I think uh, this is what I want to do. Like, it, this, the last four days, which is I've been working every day, I've really fucking, I just love it. Like, because there's so many stages where it picks up. Like the first time you write a melody that everyone's into and gets buzzed off, and then like I don't know, the first time you write like it's when you record all the guitars and it comes together, and then eventually when you hear the actual track and you're like, shit, this is there's a reason why yeah we decided to work together yeah because it it work. I don't know the the only apprehension I have is I just don't want to be wasting it. I don't want to be wasting your guys' time or anyone's time. So I'm always worried about like, what if I can't bring anything to the session? You know, like, yeah. what if I'm just like a fucking bit of dead wood in the corner going, yeah, can you play, uh, can you play that hi hat a little bit more? Like, I, don't <laughs> think, I, I, I really want to try and like help whoever I'm working with. So, but yeah, I, I don't know. To be honest, I've really enjoyed the session. I think it's worked. I think the perk of like the, the first day, like this is day two now, um, you got to actually understand us as a band. We sat down, we had the conversation of yeah, what totally. we wanted to do next. So you, um, got, you guys are like super cool and northern and like you're really chill. You keep, <laughs> keep your emotions to yourselves and you're very like cool, calm and collected. Whereas I'm like a super excitable southerner. Yeah. And like I, I, so was, I was kind of like, oh, okay, cool. But um, no, this is I think having that, yeah, having that step before you like go, right, let's start yeah, recording. Yeah, because if, say, if, for instance, I think we've got like, quite a lot more done today just because we already we like yesterday was just laying the ground like when it? it was like yeah. figuring yeah. out figuring out what you guys want me suggesting some shit like you either saying i'm into it i want to do it or it's too stupid or whatever like yeah so i think you you need it like i i, I always say like I, I don't care about money I, I mean in terms of like trying to get achieve something you need a day if you're thinking of just doing one day you need another day to to figure out what you're doing and then actually do it you yeah know what i mean like, we should mention that you brought a track that wasn't fully complete here's the full demo but it wasn't like here's nothing you had we initial ideas yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and, and there was definitely a vibe as well like yeah you sent it through like a week stuff. ago or whatever and i was like there's definitely some stuff we can do with this yeah. it's gone in a different direction but i'm into it oh fuck yeah well, that's what you said like, on the first day it was like i'd be happy to like change it in like in well, different ways and like yeah yeah I guess that's the cool thing because obviously we're both on the same page with that yeah man I keep doing that all the time it's all right yeah um it's cool that we're both on the same page with that and again like you've had that experience though obviously for a career with y- yeah yeah totally like, singing so like you and charlie just click instantly and it's cool because he's got that to bounce off yeah yeah great. And, and like i think like he's a very he's a very sweet man and i think he doubts himself a lot yeah definitely so yeah. if i can help him like have a bit of self-confidence and like like earlier we were doing a take and he was like he was doubting himself I could hear it in his voice he was singing he started off singing well and then he he saw like halfway through a line his voice dropped because I knew in his head he went oh he was thinking to himself yeah. like it sounds shit or doubting himself so we stopped him and we just played it back like with like effects and everything so it sounded sick and, and he heard it and he was like oh that's what it sounded like because clearly in his head that's not how he sounds yeah. he's so, doubting himself so stuff like that yeah. I, I really enjoy doing because but look, I've been blessed really because luckily you guys are all really fucking good at your instruments and like he can he can actually sing really well yeah. so it's like it's kind of I disagree easy. on my part but yeah the rest of the guys are <laughs> <sorry. laughs> absolutely sorry. but that's the thing everyone will say that about yeah, I think that's listen. the thing with musicians in general like I think everyone goes into being like, oh, I can't do that. Or there's, yeah, always, totally. there's always that heavy criticism upon yourself where it's, it's not what you imagine in your head, therefore. But I think it's nice in a way because it means you're yeah. not a fucking arrogant arsehole, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, I always find the shit of musicians I meet are the ones that are like super arrogant and like, I'm like, I don't know, it's weird. It's like we were saying earlier, like the, the bands that I run into that are like dickheads are like bands that are not big at all like yeah. some of the nicest bands I've ever met are like world famous yeah we were saying it's a running theme but it's weird not to be disrespectful but the smaller bands are usually cocks yeah yeah. I wouldn't say usually I just said like I, w- I would just say like yeah, that's, some that's of the probably no, no, no not at all but I would just say <laughs> I would just say if I'm thinking about the, w- the the biggest pricks I've ever met they're not from massively famous bands they're from like low or mid-level bands 
Not that that means anything. If you're All a dickhead, you're a dickhead. Bands, uh, cunks. You heard me. <laughs> <laughs> I think you said it. I think that's the thing of where the, some bands will put themselves on the pedestal because they think they're like, oh, we're at this point, but because they don't know the levels above them, they consider that, oh, I'm at a point of where I can be like this. Yeah. And truth be told, there is never a point where you can be like that. Just nah. if you're a humble. Imagine being like that in real life. Those people don't have any friends. Yeah. Like, imagine being that in a situation. Imagine being like that in a scenario where you're not like worshipped every night and you don't have people like tour managers and people going, oh, you're right. Do you want a cup of tea? Like often you like <laughs> literally true. People in bands get treated like babies. They they wake up in the morning on a tour bus. They walk out the door. And there's a fucking arrow on the floor that says dressing room. And so they, they don't have to think. <laughs> so imagine doing that for like 10, 20 years. You turn into a retard. Like you, turn, <laughs> you can't say retard anymore, can you? <laughs> you, you turn into like you revert back to like a baby like you you turn you because you don't need to think for yourself so you just I don't know like I've I've even caught myself doing stuff sometimes and be like what the fuck are you doing snap out of that like you're not that's not you so like as a, like I can imagine if you've had your imagine if you become famous at a super young age your ego is going to be tickled from you're going to be it destroys you as a person child like, actors are like child actors for that shit aren't they uh, absolutely yeah. and and you know what I can't really blame them because they don't know any different. No. How the fuck are you supposed to get a grasp on real life when you've been... When what your job is pretending. Exactly. But also, every single person is asked... Because everyone's scared of you. Not scared of you. Intimidated. Ev- intimidated, maybe. But <clears throat> also, like they just want to impress you and they want to like make sure that at all times you're okay. Think of another... Think of any other human being that you ever do that with. It's a baby. You want to make sure it doesn't die and you want to make sure... <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean like you want to make sure like who do you look after to that level of to that level a yeah. baby before it can do anything yeah. for itself True. people treat musicians like that like you have a fucking tour manager a guitar tech a drum tech all they're doing is asking you if you're alright can I help you with this can I do this all fucking day so I get it but I don't know we ramble it I'm rambling. That way, to be honest, but yeah. no I've never actually I think I would prefer the whole uh, not such a DIY aspect but more you're more in control of your day to day rather than it being yeah. like, here's everything handed on a plate to you. And yeah. I think I prefer that preference in comparison to it, it being spoon fed everything. Totally. But I think when you get to a certain point, I think you don't really have a say in that matter. I mean, if you want to have a say in that matter, you can always have a say in that matter. But I think people just get not lazy, they just get caught up in it. Like, yeah. just like, man, well, fuck it. If he's going to do it for me, I'll just concentrate on that thing. Yeah. Whereas sure. it's always better to have control over everything. And it took me years to realise that. Because I used to be like, I'll write the songs, everyone else can do shit for me. And it doesn't work because like you lose control of everything. And 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 then I'll be like scratching my head going, I don't know why this hasn't worked. I'm like, I, Cause you took your eye off the ball. I I didn't I wasn't focused on anything. I was just going, Here's a song, fuck off, I'm gonna go to the pub, you can do everything else. It doesn't work. You need to be that's why those bands that really care and really make it are the ones that like do everything themselves. Yeah. They really like I don't know, like like while she sleeps is such a hard working man because they do that everything themselves. Level. Everything. Yeah. Design everything. And they're the humblest, nicest dudes ever. So it's like and that's just an example. There's tons of bands like that. Yeah. They put that post out though not long back, didn't they? About the uh, was it buying the merch? Yeah, yeah. Supporting like bands. In comparison to streams. Yeah, in comparison yeah. to yeah, 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 yeah. They, like buying merch in, yeah, in, yeah. in comparison to like say if you get like two thousand streams or something like that on Spotify. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Like yeah, it's looking a lot. Man, yeah. I got mad respect for them. Like, and they're from here. Sheffield. <laughs> but yeah, I got <laughs> massive respect for them because they just fucking do everything themselves, and they're just really, they 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 got it. They know what they know what they're doing. But I don't. The thing is, I ain't got that level of drive. Like, I I have only ever really cared about like music, and yeah. eating, <laughs> and watching UFC. That's all. Like, that's <laughs> like that's like the only things I care about in the world. So I've never had a, that drive to do that. But like, I, I, if you've got it in you, fucking do it. Because the more in control you are, the more you're going to achieve, the more you're going to get out of it. And like, the less you have to answer to other people. I don't mean that in like a childish way. I mean, I mean that in like a, if, you, if you're in control, you can shape wherever the fuck your future is going to go because yeah. you're in charge of every aspect of it. So it's sick. Like, whereas I've always just bailed out and be like, nah, I can't be arsed. I'll rely on other people, which is in hindsight, if I could go back to being young and knowing what I know now, I'm nearly thirty now, which is old. <laughs> so I would, I would, I would do a lot of shit differently. But I don't know. But I think if you did things differently, you wouldn't have the lessons that you 
gaining life. I think that's yeah, I've that's the other, that's the other approach to it. Yeah, totally. I wouldn't I wouldn't know the stuff I know now, or I wouldn't feel the same way I feel now if I had. Yeah, I think yeah. it's like when we've had like previous bands and shit like that, where they've um, something's not worked or something's not gone the way you want it to, and then when it's gone to another band or another yeah. project, it's then take what you've took from that do it the other way and see how that turns out if that doesn't work again right. again totally. and again and again and i think that's where we've ended up with this where we've kind of learned the importance of like networking with other people and being nice yeah and just not being a cock <laughs> i think that's the most important thing 100 mate 100 so i'm curious what was the was there a completely different approach in terms of song gray when it came to rituals in where you wanted to take it because obviously you had all these countless nights, yeah, and then you went to rituals. Yeah. Obviously, there was a big sound difference between them. Yeah, what was yeah. like the mi- the main driving force? Was that was that just the people involved in it, um, or to some extent, yeah? Because like Phil's a big like I, like I predominantly listen to like I love like really heavy music. Like I love I love a lot of hardcore, but my I, like I ba- I basically just listen to like hip hop and like I anything with a big groove. I'm really I'm really really into. So like yeah. I, don't, I don't really have a head in in a rock music these days but phil who uh owns this place and like recorded recorded our record he's massively into pop and he always keeps up with like what i'm so bad at like knowing new music he always keeps up with like new music and stuff and it's great so yeah to some extent it was it was to do with the fact that he's like super into that but also i think it was just the mediums of recording like normally i'll write songs not recording writing and demoing i'll normally i'll demo songs on an acoustic guitar on my own yeah previously and it so you kind of it steers more towards the rock sound. Yeah. Um, but in this case, we were like going in and we were writing on like a synth on the on the computer. And I was using, like, I, I finally, at the age of like 20, when did we start recording? 28, finally learned how to use like recording software because I've never been able to do it before. Yeah. So I finally like actually figured it out. And um, yeah, so I think, I think like, for instance, we we never, excuse me, Jesus, sorry. Prosecco does that. Um, <laughs> we never like sat down and thought, I want to write a record that's like way popular because that's a. I've never, I've never. I, d- I think when you decide to do something like that before you do what comes naturally and what gives you like the thing, yeah, you hint you're stepping on your own toes a little bit. Like you are sort of like you you're limiting yourself. So it was lit- completely natural. It was just I think it was just the means of record, like the means of demoing it. We were just doing it all on a fucking on like software and and yeah. So this. Where normally I would write something on a guitar, we were doing a synth instead because it was just easier to do. Yeah, it. and then it ended up sounding pretty cool. I, I don't know; it was, it was weird. It was it was it was interesting. It was a weird it was a weird process. Like it was it, a lot of the other boys weren't invo- weren't really involved that much. It was mainly just like me and Phil yeah. in that room, which we've been in for the last two days for three months, just like <laughs> fuck, <laughs> try, just fucking around trying to get kick drum to sound like Justin Bieber, and it was I don't know. It was, it's, it's like it you've gone weird. for a different like sound though as well for each album because with Old Souls you had the whole like choir like behind it yeah, and yeah. orchestra sort of thing which yeah was definitely cool. and then like obviously the next album after that it completely like changed yeah and the first the second album was it was a lot of like acoustic sort of stuff yeah, so yeah, it's totally. like you put you progressed yourself through it and you like try and in a way like different sounds like within the genre if you get me yeah yeah massively but, yeah, like it's cool also yeah. I get bored super easy so I was just like <laughs> I like switching it up a bit yeah. I find it fun we were saying this like earlier because we had sort of repeating ourselves with the conversations we've had so, but yeah, um, yeah. it's like the bands we like change the sound and there's Every still record. elements yeah of totally other albums and stuff yeah definitely yeah. D- so that's important it keeps you entertained as a listener doesn't it yeah. like and then working with different people you get to bounce off absolutely completely different ideas because they'll listen to a band yeah massively never heard of or something like that what was your favourite album to record then so far of my own yeah um probably Probably old souls, because that's my that's my favorite album that we have anyway. Just because yeah. at that point in our careers or career, <laughs> yeah, whatever <laughs> um, quotation marks, it was we were like super. We didn't have any backing track or didn't play to a click live or anything. We were like there was like six of us in the band. Then my friend Grace came and did like backing vocals and like helped me out with a lot of that and it lifted shit. So everything you used to hear live was what we were playing on stage, and I was so into that. And like we. Just the whole recording process was great. Like we had a bit of money at the point, and we at that point, and we were like, we were in the studio for like 40, 50 days, I think, F- 46, 48 days or something stupid, which is a long time. Damn. And like we were there, we didn't go home. Like we stayed in residential studio, 
It was so sad. And we just got like, we were just getting fucked up. But then we didn't have any concept of time. We were just like, sometimes we record a song at like 5 a.m. Yeah. yeah. And then go to sleep at like 5 p.m. And then wake up at like, so there was, it was just so fluid. It was just weird. Like we. Yeah. Don't you think that's important to sort of live and breathe an album? I think it is. But like, there's a lot of bands that don't, like that there's a lot of people yeah. that are very like regimented which of course I understand because yeah. like, unfortu- like, unfortunately not many people can do this as a full time job because like it's not very lucrative these days like we don't make saturated. we don't make like I've been around for fucking years and we still don't make that much money like, I'm still like always in debt always broke at the end of the month like a shit so it's very hard to do it especially when you're like a smaller band like coming up so you can't always live and breathe it because you have to have a normal life. You have to work a normal yeah. job to do it, to feed your passion. Yeah. So we were in a very, very, very beautifully lucky situation where we could fucking do it. Where did you record? Where? Yeah. Um, it was called, it's called The Veil. It's in a weird, so do you know where like Evesham is? It's like near Absolutely w- not, but right. carry on. <laughs> it's like Midlands, kind of near, it's in Worcestershire. I think. Right, yeah. So yeah, it's like, I don't know, like an hour away from Worcester, I think. Right, but yeah, it's just like in this, like this guy called Chris and his wife Moira. They're fucking the nicest people ever. They just bought this massive old Georgian house. I think he had like some sick property in London, and he made a really smart investment when he was younger, and sold it when the pro- when the property market was like booming. And then he could afford this like old fucking Georgian uh, manor house yeah. in like a little village in, in Worcestershire. I think it's in Worcestershire. Um, I could be totally wrong. I'm like anything north of Watford for me is like north of England. So I don't, <laughs> I, don't I don't really know what I'm on about. Um, could have been in Gloucestershire. I don't even know those. But yeah, so yeah, we just stay there. They like, have a sick old house. Uh, it must be haunted. But yeah, there's loads of rooms that like, we stay there, like cook for ourselves. Just just wicked. But you get lost in it. Like we went mad many times. Yeah. And we were drinking way too much, like way too much. Me and Max, who's is a keyboard player in our band, who's not in a band anymore, but he used to be. Wh- when the other guys were tracking stuff, me and him, we just recorded a whole hip hop record and we just like, <laughs> we were just like <laughs> rapping and like pitching our voices down so we sounded cooler than we actually are it was just it was I don't know we weren't mad but that <laughs> that was my favourite record to record Rituals was my least favourite record to record because it was really clinical like me and Phil were coming in at like 8.30 9 every day yeah. and then we were finishing at like 7 and it was it felt like a job it was like a day to day it was like a job yeah, like a day job yeah there were some elements of it which I loved like we recorded some stuff at um, Phil's house and then we went up He's got his parents have like a cabin on the lakes in like um, the lake oh, district nice. yeah. we went up there and recorded some stuff there like which is on the record and I'm all for that like we're, we're like luckily you we don't, you can record anywhere you don't need to record in the studio anymore you can record anywhere so I love that difference of environment but when we were in the studio it, it got like it got heavy and it was like we, I was super depressed like, I would go back to I was staying in Chef the whole time and I'd go back and like get to bed and like cry and I was like, I, I wouldn't realize. I don't know why. Like I was, it, I got really depressed. I don't know why. It was just, it was weird. Sometimes you just feel that way, and it's just got to come out. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what it was, but yeah, it was weird. So yeah, sorry, that was such a long answer. Ooh. My favorite record to record was Old Soul. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot him in the answer. Going back to when you say like you obviously it was a lot better with you all being in the same like environment all the time. Like we felt like that as well. Yeah, this is why I was like adamant. Like we're not going yeah. local this time. Yeah. We're going somewhere. We're going to live and breathe, even if it's for Change two up days. Yeah, totally. We're just going to live and breathe it. Because we with our old band, we went to Whitstable um, and we stayed in a caravan for two weeks. I nodded like I know where that is. It's uh, near Kent. Kent? Yeah. Sorry, Northern I, accent. I, I, I do, I do know where Kent is. It's there near Canterbury and Kent. Okay, uh, cool. But it was literally like there was the caravan, and it was like a two-minute walk, and it was like on like the beach, like seafront, and it was just like okay, cool. bliss. And we'd walk to the studio every day. And but you're constantly in music mode, whereas like the last like few like stuff that we've done with Oxfords, it's been like back at home. So we've literally gone to the studio and then gone back home after it. Yeah, that's what. That's exactly what. Like, it, yeah, you just didn't. It charged. Like, like that's exactly what I was on about. Like, yeah. You switch off and then all you of a sudden yeah. it's, I've it's got to walk the dog, I've got to make tea, Cause look, take it's the bins out. Exactly. Like, it's a weird lifestyle. And you need to, I find, when I'm, I don't know, everyone's different, but for me, when I'm most creative, I have to be like totally lost in that weird, like, when you lose concept of time, you, li- you don't live in yeah. reality, you live in like this weird, yeah. and I'm not talking through like drugs or alcohol, although they do help for me creatively, yeah. but I'm talking like just because you're, you, the only thing you need to think about in the world is the music you're making. But like I said, not everyone has the privilege of doing that. And and when you're recording at home, like it's too, it, 
it's always better to switch up the environment, but yeah. it's hard, man. Like, yeah, that was, that was me with that last one. I think it's a bit of both, though, because this is why I love Daniel P. Carter. Because we were just talking about you can make music anywhere now. Yeah. It's so accessible. Um, you've not got to record the most perfect thing. No. But, like, when you're in that zone, it's like something else is, like, using you to just get this creative 100%. image out. Yeah. And that's what he talks about all the time. Yeah, 100%. For that. Plus, yeah. you get to wake up to a... Uh, some of your mem- like members are uh, sat outside the caravan in his wife beater vest with the <laughs> <laughs> pure white trash. So good. I'm yeah. into that. I'm that was a that. bad do that, wasn't it? We was all like... <laughs> who who are we talking about? Yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I think he's yes, he's Matt. not usually him, so he was like, what the fuck's Matt? So we looked outside, sat on the bench. Sitting on the porch, watching yeah. people scrap L- in the yard. <laughs> and a can of fucking caravan. Stella with his wife beater. <laughs> Was no, was it Stella the was missing from. No, I had a can of Fosters dinner and yeah. a can of Fosters with a fucking vest on and with shorts, shorts on. on. On the bench, just leaning against the caravan. I'm like, what the fuck, mate? It's <laughs> nine <laughs> o'clock in the morning. I am so into that. I'd, I'd have been right there with your boy if I was there. <laughs> Fosters don't do domestic violence, but if they did. <laughs> <laughs> I, remember the, I remember specifically about that session where it was like, it was like, this is great. We've had a great two weeks. And then at that point, it was what, 19? I was still, like, still working at Primark on the weekend. And we got back, and I was like, "This is the most depressing thing ever." <laughs> like, it just it just completely Shit. takes you out of it, doesn't it? And then you yeah. just feel bummed out for like a month. But when you realise you have to go back to actual reality, yeah, and be like, "Fuck, I, I don't want to go back." I'm so, I'm so lucky that I always I never I've never had a real job really. Like I just I just used to like live in mates yeah. and like steal food <laughs> and like be like an absolute scumbag. So I was like, "Fuck it." I was like, "If I ever get," this is probably also me coming up with an elaborate excuse to not actually have to do normal work but like, i was always like if i ever concentrate on anything else i'm never gonna get the most out of like music and creativity yeah. actually that's definitely me just trying to avoid living in the real world <laughs> and becoming <laughs> an adult but yeah no, it's but it's impossible it's impossible to do it like unless you've got a rich family or people that can invest in you and give you money yeah. it's impossible to start when you when you when you've got no fan base because and it's even hard it's the hardest it's ever been it's the easiest ever it's ever been because you can anyone can record anything anywhere. So it's the easiest it's ever been to make music, but it's the hardest it's ever been to make money from music because, because no one so buys stuff. Music now. Yeah, and, and there's so much fucking free, yeah. music now. So now you've got to shout as loud as you can in this massive crowd of musicians and artists. Or you've got to be one of those really fucking naturally cool, strange, <laughs> foot, like, like a Bjork, you know, like someone yeah, who yeah. just lives and breathes art. And whatever you fucking do is going to be weirder and better and more intense than whatever the fuck everyone else is doing. And they don't even know about it. So it's just, unless you're that, which is, there's only been a few in our fucking lifetime, man. So like, it's difficult. So difficult. It's a hard lifestyle. People people from the outside, they think it's like really easy and it's not. Yeah, yeah like cool. We get to hang out with our friends and play music and drink every day. Yeah, that is really cool. But it's fucking hard. It's like, you don't have a normal life. You lose... You lose friends, you miss weddings, you miss anniversaries, you miss birthdays, yeah. you miss family members dying like because you're on tour. Like I, I can't remember the last time I was home for my birthday. Not that I care, but like... But like, these are vital things that you, you want to do and want to see. Yeah. Because you're dedicated to the music you make. It just so happens that you miss them and that's the way it is because you're so fortunate that you get to do that. Exactly. So it's, it's just always it's a double-edged double sword. Yeah, man. This like, it's f- it, yeah. So I'm going to try and open a beer with one hand. It's not gonna I attempted it. It didn't work. It's that last bit on these. You can do it. But yeah, I don't know. Like it's, it's, just, it's, it's always a balance. It's always trying to find a balance. And you don't ever appreciate anything until you've, until you've done it. Like all the stuff that I moaned about in the past and was an absolute prick about. Now I'm like, do you understand how fucking lucky you were to be in that position? So like, I, I, this is my new thing. I'm My new thing. I'm, tr- I'm just really trying to appreciate every second of that I can do music as a job because it's a fu- it is a fucking privilege. Man, right? Yeah, it's a fucking privilege, and I'm so lucky to be able to do it. I think even this experience for us, like, not to toot your own horn, like, but when we was back in college and Smell All Around came out, and we were like, <laughs> "This is the shit," <laughs> which is the absolute yeah. shit. Thank you, boys. And that was probably like the soundtrack that world and off in. No, oh, it was the second al- album for me. That yeah. was like. Yeah. Thank the you. thing like 22 was the soundtrack when we was in Whitstable in the caravan for two really? weeks like. string, in your string vest string yeah, yeah. <laughs> in my, with my fosters quality thinking about how he's going to beat up his girlfriend yeah oh my non-existent man. girlfriend yeah. at that point <laughs> <laughs> but when you get we don't girlfriend. condone domestic when violence I got that. <laughs> yeah oh man thank you then did you ever see the video for Smiles Around so we've, it was yeah. it's super stupid right 
but like I just got my hand tattooed and I <coughs> there's a bit where I'm like <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I, was, I was really I was 19 when we did that so I was like <laughs> I didn't really know what to do so I was like I said to Tom the guy who was filming I was like get the old hand tattooed <laughs> <and> we were, <laughs> <laughs> my, my, I literally had it towed like the day before so my hand was like swollen like, yeah. and like bright red it looks ridiculous <laughs> twice the size <laughs> so stupid was it just a one hand tattoo and a neck tattoo at that point no I had my arm <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> what like your man from oh, what are they like called like <laughs> the evening, evening. <laughs> no it, it, it wasn't I had I had, a, I had an array of really fucking bad tattoos on my body and my arms already so yeah what's the number one worst one the worst one yeah Dude, your foot one's amazing. That's Danny DeVito. Oh, yeah. Frank Carter did that. <laughs> Shout out Frank Legend. Um, he did that. That's my. That's my. So I have two favorite tattoos. One of them's the Danny DeVito one that Frank did, and the other ones. Um, so there's a guy called Daniel Johnston, and uh, he's like a weird like. Uh, he's dead now. God rest his soul. I don't believe in God, but whatever. Um, he's like a weird like. He had like schizophrenia and a bunch of different mental problems, but he made this fucking amazing music and like really amazing lyrics. And he was sick at artwork. And like this is the front cover of one of his records. The the, the how how are you thing that I have. You can't see it because yeah. it's a podcast. But if you just <laughs> Google Daniel Johnson, hi hi I'll how are you? Take a picture you? of it and then we'll post it on our social. You can see it. <laughs> but yeah, those two are my favourites. But they're also probably the stupidest tattoos I have. Yeah. But the worst one, I've got an Irish guy's signature on my leg because he tattooed me. We got wasted. We were in Belfast years ago. And he got wasted too. And then he tattooed me. It's actually a pretty good tattoo. It's a fox. But it's got like a fucking... He signed it at the bottom. And I was like, cool, man. <laughs> Cheers, Put your bro. signature on me. Cheers, dude. <laughs> actually, you know what? I bet I was drunk. I probably asked him to sign it. <laughs> in, in, my, in my head, I'm like, that's him arrogantly doing it. I probably asked him to do it. <laughs> was this like a, a touring tattoo artist as well? Or no, he just, he, just came, he just messaged us on Facebook like the day before. and was like, if you guys want a tattoo, come down. Everyone else was like, no, nah, you're right. I got I drank a box of San Miguel to myself, twenty four, and just went down there. I was like, "Fuck it, give us a tattoo, mate." Originally, he, I didn't have any tattoos on my neck, on my hands, and he drew it on my neck first. And I was like, "Yeah, fucking do it." And then, luckily, my mate came down. and was like, "Do not get that tattoo <laughs> on your neck." <laughs> I was like, "Where well, should I get it then?" And he went, "Somewhere no one's gonna fucking see it." I was like, "I was like, yeah, I'll right, get it on my leg." That's now. a good friend. That's yeah, what that yeah, is. Matt Tag, good man. Far. Thank you, Matt. Love you. I just no remember problem, what mate. my tangent. Another Matt. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I just remember what my point was when we was mentioning the buried smiles all around. Um, it just finally comes full circle with it because we're into the massive tangent. Cool. Um, that's my fault. <laughs> I think that's I love a tan- fault. I love a tangent. It's fine. Um, yeah, I think I don't know if it was like he was slightly intimidated by the idea. It was like, holy shit, we're going to people who, like make absolute bangers of records. Like, just to, again, not, not true, but thank yeah. you. Thank you. If it helps, um, I, uh, sorry to interrupt. If it helps, I message my mate to let him know, like, chatting to yourself. Uh, and he went, I'm not surprised his albums slap harder than Chris Brown. Woo! <laughs> 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 my man. I love that shit. Not so, Chris Brown, I'm talking about yeah. <laughs> There you go, Darren. <laughs> shit. Nice one, Daz. If you want to hang out, mate. Sorry, London. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, no, fair point. To be fair, my uh, my girlfriend's brother, like, lost his shit. So I was like, I took a picture of like of us all in the same room. He was like, "Fuck off!" <laughs> like, it, just, it was like no fucking way. But yeah, I think the whole thing of his approaching this session was just like, "Is he even gonna think our songs suck?" <laughs> or it's uh, or it's uh, it's gonna go okay. It's gonna be all right. But it's gone all right. I think, I think it's gone well, man. I really well, enjoyed you came it. With like a product, but for you, like producing, how important is it? Do you want someone to have initial ideas? Or a complete blank canvas, where do we begin? Um, okay, so I would I prefer for people to have a little bit of an idea, and it's not because I'm lazy and I don't want to write something for them, it's because I want to know a bit of how they feel. I want to get a bit of their, like... What the fuck was that? The, the bottom of the mic fell off. Oh. Cool, it's fine. Yeah, it's a bit of the we'll, we'll carry on, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my mic. Um, <laughs> I w- I, just because I want to get a flavour of like what you want. So, so like my biggest fear is like not adding to it, like I said, and not... like. Not making you do shit that, or pushing people that I work with into doing something they don't want to do. So like if you bring something, even if it's like a demo of no vocals, which you guys brought, it's great because it gives me a little bit of a flavour and then we can fuck with it to the point where you guys tell me to shut up and stop suggesting stuff if it's too ridiculous or we roll with it. I don't know, like, for me, like, my main priority to get out of it is to, to it's not, like, I know a lot of producers and people that, that work with bands, all they want to do is make it sound like what they want it to sound like. I, without sounding arrogant, I do know what works. And I do like, 
not just because I've been playing music for ages, but I have like a very I love music theory, and I tr- I I trained in it when I was a kid, and like I I I know what works over stuff. So like, if I if I can like put a bit of that knowledge in, like help people. But at the end of the day, I just want people to be. I want everyone in the because it's not my song. It's your guys' song or whoever I'm working with song. So I need you to like it. You know what I mean? Like it need, that's the main. That's the main thing. Like. How different is that? Because now you're not just r- when you write your own stuff. Mm. I'm assuming you write stuff that you like. You're like, oh, this sounds sick. Um, let's, let's use it. Or it sounds good. Really. I want to use this style. K- kind of, but like I've I've always written what I thought we should write. Okay. I've always written what I thought the other guys wanted and what I thought like people that liked our band wanted. So if it was up to me, I'd write like hip hop, Michael Jackson songs, <laughs> <laughs> or, or hip hop, <laughs> pedo. <laughs> Are we allowed? To, are we allowed to still listen to Michael Jackson? I don't know. Because me and my brother were going for, uh, we were driving in his car the other day, and we were, we were jamming it really hard with the windows down. And that's we it. do you believe? Do you do you think that's the window? Um, y- y- may- maybe. Like, obviously, I think there's a, a. I don't think you can fully be blamed for it because, like, the the he went through some shit when he was a kid, yeah. but you can't take that out on other people. Yeah. But I think you just in in for me in scenarios like that, you just got to separate the art from the artist. Yeah, like, definitely. I'm not saying I back what fucking Michael Jackson's about or stuff like that. I'm just saying the greatest pop songs ever written this other and the people, greatest yeah. vocal takes ever are from that man. So, But this is my issue. I have a lot of people that go, Michael Jackson, blast that all day. Oh, he's definitely a pedo, but blast it all day. And then when we talk about profits, it's mm. a no. This and the silence that falls. This is what I'm sad about. And, uh, <laughs> this, well, is, but, this is a conversation. Though, there's concrete evidence. There's concrete. Like, yeah, you can, that, but there's, you can there's read there's the in indictment band. online. I read, it, I read it too. It's, it's horrible. Absolutely. Mm, horrible. And also, that's the worst case of pedophilia, I think, in the worst exposed case of pedophilia in England. It's worse than Gypsy. Yeah, yeah, yeah much worse. Yeah. Because we're talking about like one year olds. We're talking about people raising Child. children yeah. for the point. Like, I'm fucking nearly tearing up things right now. So, I think that does warrant you to never listen to that band. But there's five other members of that band this is it, which yeah. did nothing wrong, yeah. and their fucking careers got ruined because the singer's a cunt. Yeah, well, that's what that's what like pisses off at first because you, 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 from an outside like perspective, you can see all these people like, and I think Luke was saying it as well when he was doing the podcast yeah, with yeah, Sean. Yeah, um, and yeah. Was, was it Luke oh, and Stu? Stu yeah. yeah. was yeah, getting yeah, a lot one, of uh, death one. threats and everything like that, yeah. and it's like. And then it finding was out in Starbucks. It was no- yeah. yeah, it's nothing to do with, like that. That's what really upset me because I, I have a lot of. I don't really know any of the prophets guys properly, but I have a lot of mutual friends. Like Sean Smith's a good friend of mine, yeah. and he's shout he's Sean. super. Yeah, shout out Sean. He's and Morgan Morgan's on the podcast yeah. again. He, but they, he's he was super close with with everyone, and like he got him and his bro- like Jay, his brother, does merch for us sometimes on tour, and they both got approached by the police and were like had to give statements and shit, and they generally didn't know anything. Of course, they didn't. But yeah, the thing that I think the thing that the worst thing about it is that five other dudes in the band their career got fucked because so of that. In that podcast with um, Sapnin, that everyone should go listen to with Stu. Yeah, it's great. That's the best episode. For me. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh my god. It's Th- so there's good. one yeah. thing that he said that stood out to me, and it puts it in perspective. It's he ruined my pension, and yeah. it's like, yeah, no one looks at it like that. They of just course. Look at, oh well. Can't make music in that band now. But it's not that. It's just the years of work. So I think that's what. Like there's people with like tattoos. Dude, and as well. they were banging out like, I I was a huge fan. And you know what? If I hear a song now, I still fucking love it because mm, yeah. it's a massive part of me growing up. It's a massive part of like, dude, like we ripped off profits. We we there's there's so much. That was a massive influence in me growing up, as it probably was you guys, as it was yeah. a bunch yeah. of people. 100%. So that like. And they were a huge fucking band at the time. Huge British band. Huge Brit, like, like and it pretty much destroyed the Welsh music, music scene. scene. Yeah. It destroyed the Welsh music scene and destroyed a lot of people that were were close to him and attached to him. So it was, I don't know, it's fucked up, man. Like, yeah. well, Michael Jackson's okay. <laughs> you know Where's what? the line? Like, is this if is he tricky genuinely the shit that they say on that documentary, then he's not okay. He's a fucking <laughs> scum of the earth as well. But <clears throat> Quincy Jones can make a good album. Oh my god. I just feel yeah. like they're awful because <laughs> anyway. it's been settled in court already and then it's got brought back up so many years mm. later. Yeah. I don't know. It's like, I'm not, not saying I like, don't think it didn't happen, but I just think it's a bit like mm. you got wanting like, money or, or attention or yeah. like. It's I don't know. I don't you know. Can't, you can't, like, obviously you can't comment on it, can you? Because like it's nothing to do with us and we don't know. So. Look at a silver lining. 
we wouldn't have no devotion, wouldn't have low lives. We'd yeah, great bands. That's very true. Yeah, fantastic bands. That is very true. Highlights how good they are. Anyway. That is very true. That is let's very move true. on from paedophilia. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do that. <laughs> how? <laughs> Ridiculous. We've gone into a hole. This is the black hole of podcasts. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Let's move well, it out. Very happy things. How's the past four days producing two different bands been for you? And how do you jump from, I don't know what the approach, well, I, I sort of do know the approach you had with the other band, but how was that transition from you? And did you have to, like, have a reset in a way? Um, I know that was a lot I've, of questions. No, not at all. I, I've really enjoyed it. I... I I, I feel like this is what I want to do because like I said earlier, I enjoy this more than I enjoy playing live. I enjoy like, I enjoy being in the studio, coming up with cool ideas more than I do like touring. It's been great. It's been great. Um, yeah, I have to have a slightly different approach because obviously it's not for me, is it? It's, it? Like I said, like I have to take into consideration what the people I'm working with want because I never want to be that guy who just like makes you do stuff. Like There's it's nothing worse than that. Like when producers make you do that's why what we had they that conversation want. when we walked in. Exactly. What approach would you prefer? Exactly. But my, my my approach is always to to like like I said, there's stuff I I know how to do and I want to do and put in there. But my approach is always, if you guys are happy, I'm happy. Not in a lazy way. Not to the point where like like if you do something that I'm not into, I will suggest it, yeah. strongly suggest that we tr- at least try the way I want it to be. And then if you don't like it, really don't like it, we don't do it. I think it's a thing for artists, though, that <sighs> some people have to kind of keep an open mind when it comes to suggestion, suggestions, even. Suggestions. Uh, suggestions. Suggestion. <laughs> Come uh, open to suggestions in terms of, like, what other people can bring to the table. There's a lot of people who will be, like, demoitis, where they'll be like, no, this is the song, and it's yeah. not changing, and it's going to be like this, but, well, but great, why are you paying? Why are you paying so hundreds to record somewhere where you're not open to opinion from someone else who has experience with other bands and that genre or whatever sound they're going for and they're not open to opinions? Yeah, so I mean, I, I see both sides. Like, I get it because people can be precious about music. Like, oh, gotcha. There's stuff like I've written and I've been like, nah, I'm not changing it. And then when I finally agree to change it, I realize, I listen back and I'm like, yeah, that's way better. But yeah, I'd, Luckily, you guys are like dream people to work with because you just pretty much are open to not anything, but like you're open to suggestions. Very, yeah. very. Well, I think that's the best way to be, though, because like you said, having that o- that other opinion, yeah, I think is critical because you get so stuck and negative within your own little world of like what your writing is, and it becomes like a loop, doesn't it? Like yeah, you get lost in your own. Like, if you're only bouncing ideas off yourself, like I said earlier, if you say the same word over and over again, you don't know what it means. So yeah. it just becomes the same. You got no gauge to, no. to tell if it's good or not because you're the only person that's heard it. You're lost in it. It's, it's, it drives you to insanity sometimes. Yeah. So sometimes, even like, sometimes I'll just show like my brother who doesn't listen to any alternative music a song that I've written, and if he's like, I'll take his comments in because he's probably right. Yeah. Because he's got such an alien perspective to it, which is yeah. which is good. I think I think that that is just critical. Here's a question for you then. So, in terms of obviously, you, Death of Van has been going on a, a while now. Who would you say is the f- like the favorite person you've met who you've like looked up to in terms of an artist? Ooh, hard that question. Is a question. That is a good question. Um, and now ask the opposite. Who's been the most disappointing as well? Disappointing. <laughs> Name and shame, James. Mate, my, hey. I, no, my, my, no I, I will. I'm, I'm open. <laughs> I won't shit on anyone. My, but I don't know. Like my, I've never really met anyone that I super look up to. And part of it's because we've never really been in that situation. But part of it's because I don't yeah. wanna. Because like I take stuff really not personally, but like I'm, I'm a little fragile loser I pretend to be this like cool not cool but I pretend to be like <laughs> I pretend to be like oh, I'm fine yeah, whatever I don't give a fuck I give so much of a fuck about stuff so like I, I don't want to really meet anyone that I care so much about um, the nicest people some of the nicest people we met Kings of Leon we talked with Kings of Leon they're so nice like they gave a, they're the only some of the only people that have ever shouted us out on stage gave us our full rider um, I don't know like I've I don't. I've never really met that many people that are that are dickheads. Not 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 touring anyway. It's like that conversation we had. That it's usually the the smaller. Not yeah, all smaller. No, some smaller bands. 
Yeah. Um, an arrogance to them. We toured with Escape. When we used to be heavy, we toured with Escape of Fate. And they were just weird. Like, the singer was cool. Craig's really cool. Um, but, like, the drummer was kind of weirdly, yeah. ar- weirdly arrogant. But then he hung out with us and, like, <laughs> begged us to give him weed on the last day. So we got some weed. He smoked. He took one pull at it and was, like, dying of coughing. So, like, I feel like he's never smoked weed before. I, was like, I don't know. They, they were Hard weird. To gauge. They were weird. Um... Um, my brother and Tom, our drummer, met Bruce Springsteen, and they were because f- we played with Bruce Springsteen, which was mental. And the only thing they could think to say when they met him was "Good set, Bruce." <laughs> as if Bruce fucking Springsteen, <laughs> as if Bruce Springsteen needs to be told <laughs> that he played a good set. The man just shoved in the whole <coughs> "Born to Run" album in the middle of his set, <laughs> so it was like he'd played half a set, and he was like, "Fuck it, should we play this?" I don't know. I saw somewhere that. Um when he goes to each different city, he likes to play a song by a yeah, band that's come from yeah, that city or whatever. Yeah, it's does, crazy. Yeah. I know, he's he's a he's another one. But again, like he's never been addicted to drugs, like he's never had an alcohol problem really, so he's like he's got it together. Like he's, yeah. He's he might not be the most fun dude to hang out with, but he's got it together. Like he knows what's up and he's like, that's why he's that's why he can still sing for four hours at the age of like sixty something. <laughs> it's in good he, health. Yeah, he looks after himself. That's a key thing, isn't it, really? Like, I yeah. think that for longevity, I think that has to be, like, one of the aspects of that, yeah, at one point you can go wild, but then at some point kind of just wind yourself back in. Yeah, totally. I think that... Yeah, Vince I, Neil. Unless you're Vince Neil, yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> Man, why are they touring again? They should have left it alone. Yeah, it's true. But yeah, I, I can't really answer that question because I've never... I don't know, like, I... As you can probably tell, I talk loads and I try and like make people feel comfortable anyway. So like, yeah, and that's not because I like the sound of my own voice. It's because I get nervous and I can't stop having like ver- verbal diarrhea. Yeah. So like, everyone I've ever met, I've done that, and eventually they've either like decided they don't like me and not spoke to me again, or they've decided they do like me and kept talking to me. So like, it's kind of it's weird. <laughs> 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 but I th- it, yeah, I think that's just an artist thing, though, isn't it? Because there's always gonna be that they have that barrier of that. They'll be like, oh yeah, we're cool, or yeah. I don't care. But really, like they they really do care. Oh, totally. I just remembered actually, like one of my favorite bands ever growing up, and probably the per- the people that I learned to to understand harmonies from is Jimmy Eat World, and we All right. we, we toured with Jimmy Eat World, and they are the crew of well, the crew, the touring crew at the time were like the biggest cunts we've ever met in my life. So they didn't give us like catering. They threatened to break our bass player's arm on the first day. Bear in mind he's six what? foot four, and he'll fuck you up. And this guy was like a skinny little loser it was like oh, it's so st- like it's mental but this and was the crew though this was a crew it wasn't a band yeah. still love that band they're amazing so, good. so yeah well, it wasn't even the band the band were actually really nice they shouted us actually they did shout us out as well but yeah the, it's just the crew so actually you know what it's more the crew more yeah. more crew who are dickheads when you tour because they don't really know why they're there they've got a bit of a complex they're on a power trip um Actually, I just remembered another, in answer to the other question, the singer from Feeder, pretty big band, <laughs> we toured with them, and he the first day, like, he came in and just gave us a bottle of champagne, he was like, thanks for touring with us, and it was just really That's nice. Rad, so That's cool. Yeah, there's, there's some good people out there, but yeah, it's mainly the crew that, are, touring crew sometimes are just difficult. Yeah. Tour managers. Yeah. yeah. We, c- we can agree with that at some point. It's funny for when we've done shows where the tour managers, like... Been a bit of a well, he's more the pay to play shows, wasn't it? There's the mm. one that we did at Factory in Manchester. I remember one. getting a motivational talk down by um, shit, who was his name? Such thing as a motivational talk down? Sam from Marmosets. When we supported them in Manchester, this is 2014, we did that, yeah. And remember that we was like at that point, we was what 18, 19, or something yeah. like that, and yeah. we were like, oh, this is like one of our like biggest shows we've ever done and it was like why would you do usually it was like oh like these pay to plays and he looked at me right in the eyes and promised me you'll never do a pay to play show everyone's like okay yeah i'm fine yeah. <laughs> and he was like good and then he carried on with his day and i was <laughs> like okay so good they're nice guys aren't they yeah they're lovely yeah. I like nice just guys and girl yeah guys and girl <laughs> i miss him it's been a while we was the odd one out on that bill though weren't we yeah it was like oh, a really fuck heavy me, we band on like Wait, was it was we on, we was on first? We was on first. It was like a very like female fronted poppy, yeah, 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 like sort of like pop rock sort of band. And then they had was it the Colour Line? 
Yeah, the colour line. And they were like, just full on, like, I don't know, once they were hardcore, but they were just like. Mathcore. Yeah. Mathcore? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Straight on after, like, a pop rock band with a female. So it. And then you have Marmoset, too. The you can't really this was it. before as well like the first album yeah. came out so this was like a peak point of where they were getting Sick. to like the upper level yeah, yeah, yeah. and like the, one of the representatives from like Roadrunner was there and stuff like that and we're like oh, God, that's a guy from Roadrunner they were <laughs> <laughs> they fucking slip knots on yeah. that label <laughs> we was trying to try and impress him us being a fucking pop punk happy old flicky happy thing yeah. <laughs> <don't> we? <laughs> we're like not a chance and then he went yeah here's 50 quid and we went Wait, did we pay you? For yeah, we had 50 <laughs> quid ready to give him. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're not used, used to it. it was like, like, we're getting paid for Shit, this. we need to find 50 quid. <laughs> like, I got a tenner off everyone and was like ready to give him 50 quid. I went, oh, so when do you want this cash? He was like, what do you mean? I'm, like, <laughs> I'm giving you cash, mate. He's like, no, this is your invoice. I was like, yeah, here's the cash. Like, no, we're giving you 50 quid. I was like, that's a nice person. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah if, it, was if, like, if that had been me, I'd be like, go on then. Yeah, go on then. <laughs> I remember my dad was with me. How cheap to ground gear? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I remember when, like my dad was with us at that point. I was like, Dad, can you just get a picture of me with this invoice? <laughs> <laughs> you might be the only person that's ever taken a yeah, photo just with to an invoice. Like we've actually got paid for a gig ever. What's the weirdest? Um, sorry, I'm no, asking no, you a question. Yeah, it. go for it. What's the weirdest <laughs> amount of money you've ever been paid for a show? Like the most specific amount. <laughs> I don't think they've only been paid in terms for one of we're not being paid that much. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's what I mean. Like, have well, you ever I been think, paid I something? The one when we first started, we was in high school, where we walked around for three hours to pubs to try and get a show, like around like. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know when you first start band and you're like overconfident? You're like, yeah, we're gonna go to like all these places. We're gonna get. We're a flyer. We're gonna yeah, fucking. Yeah, we're yeah, gonna yeah. get signed. Do all our own <laughs> yeah. promotion. Yeah. It's gonna work. It was like that. So we practiced. And then was like, right, we're going to practice. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I thought you meant practicing, like handing out oh, flyers. No, 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 no. <laughs> you meant you meant you meant you actually practiced like rehearsed. <laughs> I thought you meant like yeah. practicing how to talk to people yeah. and make them come to your show. You know, Matty, if he has to honest. practice handing out flyers, <laughs> that's something you'd have to do. <laughs> it's, just, it's a flick <laughs> and a, it's a flick and an, Wait, and an eyebrow bad? raise. If you don't, get, if you don't get that <laughs> wrist <laughs> flick right, like you fucked it. Sign <laughs> his room like this. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the back. Down below. <laughs> Yeah, no, we we practiced like a shitload and then was like, right, we're going to go to all these pubs and they're all going to go, yeah, we're going to get you on the payers and money. And we literally went We got to one. Like, we got one. We got one. That's <laughs> what? <laughs> and we were like, fuck than, yeah, we just need that. a singer. <laughs> 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 so we did it. I remember that our Roll exact up. payment, I'm um, shit you not, was two lemonades each. <laughs> because we were, in, we were at the That's point right. it was like fuck yeah we've got free drinks like <laughs> non-alcoholic man. non-alcoholic because what we was what 16 15, uh, 15 16, yeah. 16 we're like you okay, can't we've played Decent. in the pub and everyone's like can you play teenage kicks and we were like not really at that point we're like into Alter Bridge and stuff like that like no it's not it's not my style <laughs> <laughs> I don't do yourself, that. Do you have a, like a specific amount you've had? That's the only reason why I said it. Because like once we played in a place called actually no, we didn't even play. We went to a place called Nuneaton. You've ever been there? No. <laughs> so that's all like near. I think it's near Birmingham. I don't, like I said, I fucking think Watford's north, so I ain't got a clue. Um, but yeah, basically we didn't even play because the show got cancelled. But we went there. We hung out. The first band played. And then for some reason I can't remember why it got cancelled. But they paid us like I think it was like twelve pounds twenty five or something. I was like twelve pounds twenty five. What did they work out their 25p? I think it was all that was left in their like little petty cash box. And I was like, sweet. (laughs) Cheers, guys. I remember the alternative where we played a show, which was a pay-to-play, at Factory in Manchester. And you paid them? We were like one of them people like, no, we'll be normal human beings. We'll stay and watch every band. Yeah. Every other band didn't have this etiquette because we hadn't sold tickets. No one else has sold tickets because it was one of them where bands just play to each other. There's just nothing else. I've done that a few times. So well. when the promoters began to panic that he was no, they hadn't had any cash and they hadn't really earned anything from it, he came up to us a lot and he was like, oh yeah, great set. Uh, can you get, how much was it? It was a lot of money we had to take out. I think it was like You had to quid. pay him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had to pay him like 200 quid for actually going. We didn't, work. we didn't, by the way. We He said that to us and then he, Matt came outside and went, yeah, probably leave me all this guy 200 quid and we'll, 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 I'll give you a pack to in the car as soon as like, she fuck off let's fuck off <laughs> <laughs> quality <laughs> hey, they were the days I love that shit I miss that it sucks though I, I think that really sucks like in terms of like where they were like 
yeah, we'll scrutinize young bands because they want to play this venue or whatever else. Mm. So we had that back with the Cavern. It's a learning Liverpool. curve, though. Liverpool? Yeah. Oh, we it is like, a learning curve, yeah. right. You, you've got to do it so then you can take away from that experience and be like, I think it makes... Like, again. going back to what we were saying about like being dickheads, I think it... I can, like when, I'm, when we meet bands, I can always tell who's gone through the shit and come up and like really has to do the van tours for years and like living yeah. in vans and like playing for no money and like nicking from gas stations because you ain't got any money, you can't eat. You can tell the bands that have done that versus the bands that just get given shit on a fucking plate or like people that have like rich parents or whatever. Like, So it definitely teaches you a level of sort of like respect and a bit of like appreciation and, yeah. and, and just a bit of like etiquette, you know? And I, I don't know why I've never pronounced that word that way. <laughs> Eti- etiquette. That's how you say it, isn't it? Etiquette. <laughs> Etiquette. Etiquette. In 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 the like in the business, if you can call it business, <laughs> talking about losing money. <laughs> but um Yeah. So I don't know, like it definitely has its purpose. Like it definitely fucking makes you a bit of a better human being in some cases. But like it's yeah, super frustrating man. Like It's gotta it's gotta like knock you down though, because like I said, when we was like overconfident when you started, you realise how like it's not that easy. Like and, oh, yeah. and, it, and it knocks you down like it does. quite a bit, but obviously just yeah. gotta keep pushing and it. And it cuts you yeah. to the core, doesn't it? Sometimes, like yeah. it fucks you up. But yeah, I think it's there, it, I think it's easy to get bummed out when something doesn't go the way you want it to. But then that's like you grow from it. That's, that's why like perseverance makes a good well, the record balance. by Hatebreed. Good record. <laughs> Someone else we're gonna have to blast in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, it is a great record. Though. But yeah, you're right, 100. Yeah. percent Like it's the only thing that is ever gonna win it's the only thing that's ever going to get you through it isn't it if you keep fucking doing it despite what sh- yeah. despite how many times you get paid like eight pounds you just got to keep going like it's such a weird industry i've never known someone like you get no credit for the amazing stuff you're doing right now <clears throat> keep doing it and you'll wait a while and you might still not find out but like, so like we say it's because it changes so oversaturated it's so it's easy so to do and it changes constantly yeah, and the, the more technology is getting involved, the, the quicker it's changing. It's just the like easier it gets. It's impossible to keep up. There's always been a few artists who just fucking know that they're always ahead of the game. Like that's like genius premonition. I don't know how they do it. It's, it's obviously just random. Drugs. DMT could, could be, could be. <laughs> DMT. DMT. <laughs> like, 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 like 1975. Like probably, I think they're one of the best bands in the UK. Maybe the world. And um. Oh, thank yes, you, <laughs> But like they've, they've, <laughs> there's been so many incarnations of the 1975 before yeah. they became the 1975. It's so like ten years they were going before. Yeah, so, and no one knew who they were really. And was but, um, but he, Matty just fucking knows what's cool before it's cool. Yeah, he just, he just, uh, he's a genius. I think. I saw uh, like when they did a radio interview, they was said that before like they were 1975. They were doing like drive like they're doing all stuff. So like they, were, they were they were called Big Sleep for a yeah, while Big as well. Sleep, yeah, but they were doing like they used to do covers of like Velvet Revolver, Sliver, and that. Yeah, like, yeah. I was fucking weird because we. Bam, 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 bam. I couldn't <laughs> imagine Matt Healy singing that, but like. Mate, Matt used to like yeah. scream and shit back in the day. Like it's so yeah. different. But yeah, but then again, like the, that's how you know that it's a great artist. They're changing the sound constantly. Yeah. Changing their approach. Grinding it out, yeah, totally. It's mad. Um, totally. I've lost my trail of thought. I was gonna say something else, but should we get to pet peeves? Fuck yeah, it. don't know. Cool. Yeah. All right. This is your so tonight. we have the section called pet peeves. The rules are: you pick a topic or whatever it is, um, and you rant about it. And we go from there. <laughs> I feel like the podcast All has right. been a rant to begin with. <laughs> Does not have to be music or horror related. Okay. Um, I don't know. Let me have a little think. Talk amongst yourself for a minute, boy. I'd say, no, I'd say, I'd say, like, I'd say enjoy like, the silence. It's not a pet peeve, but like a thing that I, I guess it is a pet peeve. I've, I've never. Oh no, here it is. People. That, actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a minute. Well, people that are bad at cooking is a pet peeve of mine. Like, because <laughs> it's so easy, and like, would you? Yeah, so, I'll just leave the room now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not talking about the person. I'm talking about like I'm not talking about you guys. Who, not, not you guys. I don't know. E- Anyone who who cooks what they want and eats it. I'm talking about these people on fucking Instagram that like go, "Oh, Bay cooked me a fucking peng dinner last night," <laughs> and it's literally like, Super m- yeah, or like mince and fucking half an avocado. They haven't even been bothered to smash up on a yeah. bit of like Hovis white bread. Like, <laughs> just to, actually, so that's a main pet peeve of mine. Like people posting photos and videos of food they think is amazing when actually I could have done it with my fucking eyes closed after I've just done 
four tabs of acid <laughs> and, <laughs> and been dri- like another pet peeve is how much people look at their fucking phones and go on social media like people live through social media now, don't they like yeah. at, gi- at gigs they're looking at you, you on stage through, through, through their screen. Like yeah. You might as well just go home. Up. Most of it's on Instagram Live anyway. Just fucking watch it. And home. how often it's are they going to be like lying in bed, Bay's cooking them a peng <laughs> dinner? A peng dinner, like, which is actually... Do. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I'll listen to that. Was it like for you? Like, Shitty you recording. You like phones, it, it, do, you, do you not like that? I don't mind. No, I, so I don't really... I don't mind because obviously everyone's... Everyone's... <laughs> individual and they can do whatever they want. If yeah. that's what they want to do, you if they want to pay money to come to a fucking show and watch it through... A, like nine inch, not even fucking six inch screen. Yeah, yeah great. Whatever, do whatever you want. It's more just the people that like. It's more the people that just have to broadcast be on it. Yeah, tell everyone thing they do on the internet. Like no one cares. No, not that many people care. Like I, social media and the internet is great because like it allows you to. But there's artists and people in every like aspect of the word, like painters, uh, musicians. Like comedians, everything, writers that have probably built a business from social media, so it really fucking helps. But, but you should view it as a tool and not. Should view it as a tool and not live by it. Because a lot of people, I've met a lot of people like you see them, you see their persona online. You're like, wow, they're so, they're so cool. You meet them, and they're like a fucking it's like talking to a wall. It's like, where's, yeah. where do you get like where do you get that? Why is it so different anyway? But yeah, I don't know. That's my pet peeve. I think that's a big thing though. Like, were. A, a band will do have all this amazing content and stuff like that but and then you actually watch them or the you have a conversation with them and it just isn't there because they focus yeah. on the wrong things I think totally. that's a big thing 100% on a bit of a tangent <clears throat> with people uh, when you mentioned people phones at the gigs have you ever seen the uh, Slipknot show where someone's recording it through an iPad and Corey Taylor just points them out and is like, get out, <laughs> put that away, <laughs> recording on a fucking iPad. I have iPad. not, but that sounds amazing. It's fucking brilliant. Who brings an iPad to a Slipknot show? <laughs> well, yeah, crazy, Slipknot. Right? I, I've seen people use iPads at shows, which A, is mental, but at a fucking Slipknot show. <laughs> it's like holding up In a dinner crowd. plate. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Mate, them old, I- them old iPads are bigger than dinner plates, so like, it's, it's, it's <laughs> thick as well. <laughs> like a platter, like a tray, what you put your tea and breakfast it's on, like. Ridiculous. <laughs> Plasma TV, just like, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you can see behind me. <laughs> so stupid, isn't it? Um, a bit of a random, like, put you on the spot question. Cool. What's the biggest inspiration that you've had? In my life? Yeah. Mm. And I'm only asking that because I feel like we bounced off one another and it's like... Yeah, uh, totally, man. I want to know. Yeah, uh, I want to know. I want to know. <laughs> I'm being selfish. That's such a hard question to answer because there's so many different things. That it's not going to be like one person or a thing. Are you talking about music or just in general? I think in general. I'd say like... Um, mind-altering substances, which is really bad. Like, I've, but I, I know like Steve Jobs... Said he would never have invented like the the iPhone if he hadn't have tried it LSD. So Maybe we wouldn't have had half, like half the Beatles catalog. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So LSD. I would say I would say everyone needs to try mushrooms in their life. Everyone needs to try something that like fucks with your perspective, perspective a, yeah. a little bit. So I would say, really, honestly, like just in terms of like a bigger understanding of stuff and like trying to like realize what the end. Stop folk like. T- to not just focus on what I'm doing and try and sit back and like get a little bit of an outside perspective on my own life has been like mind altering substances. But that's not saying I'm advocating using drugs because it's not. It's not for everyone. It's not for, well, and it's not sustainable because it will f- kill you. But um, I don't know, like, uh, probably when I first discovered Charles Bukowski, I know it's like, or Bukowski, or however you fucking pronounce it. I know it's like really cliche because when Tumblr became a thing, it was cool to like post his quotes on there and be like, find what you love and let it kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Johnny Craig album or something, <laughs> isn't it? Shout out Johnny. Peace. Um, stop nicking laptops, you can. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a good boy. He's a good guy. <laughs> he's a good guy. Has he got another band now? Cause he, it, mate, so he had a band a while ago called Slaves. I don't know if he's still in it. There's a song called The Pact. The second verse of that song is one of the best verses I've ever heard in any song ever. I'll play it in a minute. But, um, I forgot what the question was. Now I was thinking about Johnny Craig. Um, 
I say like when I first, yeah, when I first started reading like Charles Bukowski stuff because it, uh, it, I'm really shit. I don't really understand how to use metaphors, so I always write no bullshit like that. And he, and that's how he writes. And yeah, he's a, yeah, he's a bit of like a bigamist and a, and a he's a bit like misogynistic and. It's not for everyone. You've got to remember this was years ago in LA before it got like gentrified and people realised that it's not cool to be a dickhead, <laughs> <laughs> which is great. But like some of the stuff he writes is just so like, open and, and, and fresh and that really inspired me a lot, I think. But also like The Smiths, and he's another prick as well, Morrissey, yeah. but like The Smiths, that changed my perspective on music. Like s- the happy, jangly, jaunty sounding music with the most depressing lyrics you've ever heard in your life. I love that. That sort of taught me a lot about yeah. what you can get away with. But then Nirvana is the Nirvana for me is if you're gonna make rock music, Nirvana is the perfect. I know it's cliche because like they are everyone's favorite rock band and the best rock band ever. But that's what rock music should sound like in my head. Yeah. So yeah, all those Sick. things. And then there's uh, one more that we usually do. So it's um, what's your favorite scary movie? Favorite scary movie? Yeah. Um, I can answer this straight away. So I'm huge into Aliens. Like. I'm I'm massively into aliens, and I don't think there's really ever been an amazing alien movie made until this movie, which is called The Fourth Kind. Have you seen it? Yeah, is that what's the name? Isn't it? Mila Jokovic. Yeah, Mil- yeah. Is that her name? I yeah, think that's the name. Yeah. So it's like it's. So when I first watched it, I thought that footage was real. It's not. It's pretty freaky though. Isn't it's it? fucking. It's actually supposed to feature like some of the real footage. Yeah. And then it shows you like the comparison. It, it's like faux yeah. faux real footage, so it's not actually real. But when I first, I think that's I think that's truly one of the only good alien movies ever made and like for me I just want to see an alien so bad I've never even seen a UFO but yeah f- the best scary movie is Fourth Kind if you haven't watched it fucking watch it's it it's pretty freaky though, it's man. really yeah it's so good it's so the like whole owl, owl thing, yeah the owl thing yeah man because like after that every time I saw Owl I was like and like the bit when he's like it's not an owl it's not an owl yeah. it's like I think they c- the, bit, the bit when they're like he's going like through the regressive hip hypnosis thing yeah. and, he, and he says I think they came inside obviously talking about the aliens which he's been seeing I don't know it's so fucked cool. up man and you don't actually see the aliens because no. I think this is all alien movies downfall is there's another movie which is really great called Dark Skies until yeah. you see the alien you're like oh for fuck's sake he's ruined the whole movie Ho- the, the whole movie's really suspenseful and weird and creepy and the alien is like someone's first graphic design job and they don't know how to do it properly. And it, <laughs> or first, like, it's so shit. And War of the Worlds, another great movie, another great uh, alien movie. The aliens look weird. Like, I don't, so when you don't what, see What, the Tom it, Cruise one? Or? I do. Like, I like the original, but I think I prefer the Tom Cruise one. Yeah. What about Mars Attacks? It's not a horror movie, though, is it? <laughs> I mean, it shows aliens. It's sick, but it's not a horror movie. That's what we've been watching for the yeah. past two days. Yeah. I love it. Cloverfield, actually. Did you watch that one? Yeah, I, I, I do like it, but I don't love it. Yeah. On the fourth kind, though, is it like it's like shadows, isn't it? Like you see more than you don't Yeah, it's shadows. Like so, shadows, like, you see yeah. a little bit of a UFO and, like, shadows and, like, some... Yeah. And then at the end, when there's some footage of her, like, the... the You need to, like, read into it if you don't know what it's about. But, like, the, the woman who does hypnosis on people and, like, re- gets them to regress to, like, talk about the aliens they've seen when they've been asleep or whatever, she then has hypnosis herself at the end and like she kind of like turns into this like it looks like a ca- like a flare on the camera and she, her face like stretches and goes weird she starts speaking in like <laughs> it's really yeah, fucking yeah, weird yeah, yeah. so that freaks me out but yeah other than that you don't see anything but that, I think that's the best that's the best scary movie yeah I don't know in terms of like it's not it hasn't made me jump it doesn't make you jump but it like it sits like with fucks you. you yeah it fucks you it sits with you I think they're days. the best kind like like we've said about photos and times in this fucking podcast, like The Exorcist, like he just he just doesn't sit right. Do you <laughs> not? Do you not watch it back now though? I think it's because we've been spoiled and like again, like graphics now are so amazing. You watch yeah. The Exorcist now, and you're like, it looks shit. It's shit. It's there like is scary. certain bits though where I just feel like uh, I think like the whole like the subliminal things like popping up and stuff like yeah, that, that, and then at the time it must have been unreal. Yeah, like, like you imagine it at that time, it must I have been like imagine going to. A movie theater and a, a movie th- cinema. Oh, that's cool. Theater. I said gas station earlier, so <laughs> 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 don't, worry, don't don't worry about that. Like apparently, there's like priests and nuns stood outside asking you not to not go to go this in. Film. People, people are spontaneously people combust on the set. <laughs> like man, I'm going watching that. So, uh, sorry to take away the no, fucking. No, by all means. Start speaking. Here. Um, did you do you do you know how the Blair Witch Project was marketed in the US? Yeah. 
when it came it out. Was fucking brilliant. So the, it was marketed in the US when it came. So when when it came out in England, we obviously knew it was fake. Yeah. They marketed it as real, so they marketed it in the US as if it was footage they'd found. So they thought the people were. So missing. everyone who yeah. fucking first went to watch that thought it was real footage. Can you imagine how scary that was yeah. for people that believed it was real? There's like news anchors like yeah 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 explaining. Yeah. And you didn't know it was an advert. Yeah. Mental. Yeah, oh, that'd be That's great. And it was, was like, like it was like yeah, yeah. it was like a four month, six month lead up to it, yeah. and like adverts and everything. And like they were yeah. like, it's going to change the face of like what people believe. And the first few people that went to watch it, and then I think they got fucked with, and they had to like admit that it was fake because yeah. <laughs> people were losing their mind. Because there's only so much you can comprehend. Like imagine if you actually saw an yeah. alien or something like that. Could like, you imagine, freak out? Yeah. Could you imagine the whole thing where you went watching Blair Witch? And then you saw one of the actors or actresses that was in the film, like just in the shop or something. You'd be like, like, "Found him!" <laughs> 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 cool, <police. laughs> yeah, I don't know. So I, I think potentially that could have been the scariest movie of all time if we'd been in that scenario. It's such a good movie. It is a good movie, but imagine how good it would be if that was it, yeah, how it was marketed. Have you ever seen a ghost or anything like that? Um, I've seen some weird stuff. I've not, I don't think I've ever seen anything that because at the time when you see stuff, you don't. You don't really question it, and then it's yeah. only when you think back. Yeah, like I was driving. So my grandparents live in a place called, um, in a county called Wiltshire. It's like down south. Yeah. And so, like between where they live and a town called Winchester, there's a really long bit of road, and there's no houses or anything on it. And I was like, my girlfriend years ago used to live, used to go to uni in Winchester. So I'd like go hang out with her and then drive back at like know, one a.m. or whatever. And I was driving back one day, and it was totally dark, no one around, like blah blah blah, whatever, no houses for like maybe three miles each side. And I randomly just saw a fucking old man dressed in like an old suit holding a briefcase standing at the side of the road. And I was like, I didn't think anything of it at the time. I was like, whatever. Drove past. I was like, that's a bit weird. Got home and I was thinking about it. I was like, where the hell did he come? There's two, there's two things that, that could be. It's either a ghost yeah. or it's a man who has nothing better to do than play a practical joke on maybe the one car he's going to see that whole night, which was me. So I don't know. Maybe that was a ghost or maybe not. I don't know. And there's been loads of stuff, like little things. Like my friend used to live next to, like his parents owned an old people's home. So people died there all the time. And his house was attached to it. And I remember like one day, like we heard like a, a a rattle in the cupboard, whatever, it was weird. Opened the cupboard and then like five minutes later, the towels out of the cupboard like flew out. They didn't like fall out. They like, flew out it's fucking weird so yeah I've seen some weird shit but like the stuff I want to see is I want to see I need to see a UFO and I've never seen one yeah or but like you believe it obviously in ghosts and aliens and stuff like yeah. I believe in ghosts I don't think they're like little fucking enter- I don't think they're like Casper I don't think they're <laughs> like but I, f- I feel like I feel like it's trapped energy like a human yeah. being has so much stuff like it's so much like pent up energy like I yeah. think a ghost is like a it's almost like a snapshot of a time, you know? Like, so I don't think it's like a... I don't think you can talk to a fucking ghost and be like, what, mate? What are you like? I think it's like a... It's like almost like a... They're stuck in that routine. Yeah, stopping, it's like a yeah, negative in a routine. photograph. Like it's, it's like a repeat. So I think, yeah, it's trapped energy. So I do believe in that. I definitely believe in life, in life on other planets. Yeah. Which should be classed as an alien. Do I necessarily believe that they look like what Paul. we think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's Seth Rogen in a tiny little <laughs> suit. Exactly. Like, an alien could look like a fucking... Bug. It could be anything. It could be like a little, look, look a mouse turd. It could be anything. Like, yeah. but because it's life on another planet, that is what classifies as an alien. So yeah. yeah, of course I believe in that. But I want them to look like Paul, and I want, <laughs> and I want to meet one. <laughs> so I, I more just want to. B- I think I want to believe in stuff like that more than I actually believe in it because I just want anything that makes life a bit more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to that life circle with ghosts, like you're saying, though, like I know my mum and dad's house. Apparently, like, uh, like the old guy used to live there. He passed away within the house. Mm. And uh, so my old bedroom was at the top of the stairs. And um, apparently, he was obviously he had really, like, breathing problems because my granddad, like, knew of him. And uh, when we first moved in, I didn't know anything about that. And, uh, like, a couple nights, I could hear, like, his breathing. It's like, oh, my God. Like, oh, really? Fuck. I yeah, like, I was properly shitting one. And my girlfriend was there with me at the time, and she could hear it as well. Um, and we obviously we wondered what it was at first, and then apparently the one of her next door neighbours, her friend, was a medium, and she walked past the window once and saw like this guy standing there, and she told like mum and dad, because she said at the time like that was just before we moved in, she said like no one lives there anymore, but I figured obviously like you said it's like they're stuck in that circle, so obviously he was coming up them stairs like when yeah, he was going yeah, to totally. bed, and like he's obviously out of breath because of his breathing, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's where he stood right near it's the door. Like, it's like, like a capture of energy. Yeah. It's not, yeah. Oh, oh, man, it's it's mad. So if you think so about yeah. energy, it doesn't just disappear. Of course it, goes it doesn't. Yeah. And something is like, 
as a living being, like something is not as important, but like the amount of sh- like we're not just a physical body. Where there's something like what's it, seven grams or something that the the or seven pounds that the the body loses when you die. Shit, like something really physically fun? like leaves your body. So like I don't know. Like we are. That's got to be something. And I think that's the en- that's the energy of like. Imagine such a like traumatic experience, especially if you died in a traumatic way. Yeah, that's got to leave like a snapshot on. I just think we're not open to seeing it. No. Yeah, like, a lot of cultures believe in like little people, like pixies, like fucking no. fairies or whatever. Like Same me. Oh, <laughs> dude, I'm I'm a short man myself, so <laughs> peace and love. <laughs> <laughs> but like a lot, like in Iceland, they have a huge belief in like um, like fairies and pixies or whatever. Not they have a different name, obviously. And like in a lot of countries in Africa, it's like a, it's like they believe in them as much as they believe in like dogs yeah. like it's normal for them like so i think we just lost the ability to be in touch with that kind of shit but or maybe they take more drugs than we do i don't know mm-hmm. it could be yeah. <laughs> so many factors like it could be culture it could be drugs, anything it could be anything could be anything yeah but yeah i don't know I'm, i want to believe in all that shit i love it yeah it's cool it's cool it's kind of like comfort in, in a way as well yeah right? definitely like i don't believe in god as such but it's cool like just there's something bigger isn't it yeah yeah same I think that's what's good about mushrooms is 100%. it puts a perspective where you're like, I don't matter. Nothing matters. It's inconsistent. I may as well just enjoy it and make a tiny little... 100%. Like that's the crazy thing about life, isn't it, really, though? That you're, oh, you're essentially just a speck. Yeah, you're insignificant. No matter how fucking cool you think you are or important you think you are. I don't mean you, I mean one. <laughs> uh, you're just a part in this and you just got to try and enjoy it. Like we could be like a fucking microorganism and not like really that bit exactly. on that bit on Men in Black when he you've seen it when he opens yeah, yeah. The, the opens the fucking locker and there's a whole world yeah, inside or, or there's yeah. that bit when there's like it zooms out on the world and it's just some aliens playing marbles and one of the marbles <laughs> is the world like <laughs> obviously mad. that's fucking stupid know. but we don't know do we like it's mad though we have no concept of anything other than what's going on here yeah but yeah I don't know man like but even people like. That people look like, like for instance Joe Rogan. Like, obviously, I guess you know Joe Rogan. Like he he does mushrooms a couple of times a year, every year, because yeah. he says like he absolutely implores people to do it because it brings so, it brings perspective. Yeah, and I I tend to agree with him in a way. Well, I'm yeah. up to damn in July, so I want to try some trouble. You should. Yeah, man, do it. You should do it. Sorry, Dad, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if it grows in the ground, it's, <laughs> probably, it's probably okay. <laughs> Go on, lad. There's a podcast I really like. It's not a. Uh, it's called Say Why to Drugs. I think that's such a good... I think so too. Totally. Good little saying. So exactly. Yeah. Like, don't be... Yeah, I'm not... I'm not what does it do advocate. for you? If that works, then great. If not, exactly. don't do it. 100%. Optional. Yeah, like, I'm not going to be doing LSD regularly because it f- fucking... F- for the, the so- sort of mindset that I have where I overthink everything, it's not good. And you can't shut it off. Yeah. Mushrooms is a much more dumbed-down version of that, and it works differently. You can stop it if you want. For instance, for me, I don't know how it is for you. When I, if I do mushrooms, if I if I'm freaking out and having a shit time, if I drink a couple beers, it stops. Yeah, like goes away. I don't know why. I don't know what that is. But and th- but they do tell you, don't they? Well, like when you when you, like when I was younger and I fucking went, I was like, so how do I do this? They were like, it works much better if you don't drink. It works much better if you have got a clear head and you take it. So like it makes sense. I guess the booze just like fucks with it and like yeah, alters the substance yeah. inside you. But yeah, I don't know. Like I'm, I wouldn't say do it regularly. You don't make it a habit, but like. Explore as well yeah. at the same time. It's a bit of both. Find out what works. I think that wraps it up. Nothing matters. You're insignificant. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, James. Fuck yeah. I appreciate <laughs> it. I'm, I'm insignificant. Thank you for having me. No, mate. Thank you for it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure, dude. So I'm so sorry for rambling. Producing. Mate, I loved it. I'd keep you longer <laughs> if I could, but I'm intruding on a session here. So <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. Uh, I'll intrude on more at some point, I'm sure. Fuck yeah. 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 Sweet. Do part two at some point. 100%. Yeah. Beautiful. Let's do it. Thank you. I'm also. Awesome. Awesome. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. Like, oh, that is an idea. Let's do it. We can do it. Like, high cast. Well, let's do it. Yeah. Well, like, dude, like, again, going back to Joe Rogan, he, they're always smoking yeah, weed. They're, doing they, shit they, they're, they're always, not just the same as mushrooms, but like, they always, and he would, if he had a, if he had on a guest that was like, yeah, fuck it, let's do mushrooms, he'd be up for it. Elon Musk. Yeah, 100%. Oh, they then, do, don't they? Yeah. I forgot about that. Did they do mushrooms? Yeah, they do mushrooms. Uh, no, no. Th- they got him high. Because right. it's legal in Colorado, and then he was he was trying to get um you know Penn thingy from Penn and Teller those two oh shit they, yeah the it, so Penn's never like drunk or done drugs and it, Joe Rogan was like trying to get him to do weed <laughs> he was like he was like you know what Joe if you're saying it I probably would do it he I makes a great argument let's be yeah. honest and like and I I love him not for the podcast because he's the greatest uh, mixed martial arts 
commentator of all yeah. time. And mixed martial arts shit. is probably my main passion. Anyway, I'm chatting shit. Right. Love you guys. Thank you. you guys. Guys. Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, boy. That was episode 30 of an earful podcast with James from Deaf Havana. We hope you enjoyed it and we hope it took you away from these uncertain, strange times while you're stuck indoors. It's probably worth mentioning, um, and it's pretty obvious, but to everyone who has listened to the podcast over the past year, a huge, huge thank you for supporting us, sharing our episodes, whatever ones you've enjoyed or whatever else. It's always been appreciated and we can't wait to carry this on within the next year or the year after that or whatever else, but... Yeah, stay tuned. We're going to carry on getting guests um, and we're going to work out um, an arrangement to try and get this sorted in these weird times. But yeah, there's definitely more episodes coming soon. Yeah, so uh, after that, don't forget to check us out on our socials. So Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all under an EFL podcast. Um, keep up to date on the new episodes. Uh, go check our old episodes out because, as we said, been in a podcast for a year now so we've got a lot of a uh, catalogue for you to listen to um yeah enjoy and take care anyway <laughs>